Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this pay update. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come and discuss pay with us. We're joined here tonight by our Chair of Council, Dave Dawes, our um, Trade Union Committee lead at the moment, and that is Denise Kelly. Um, we're also joined by Helen Wiley and myself to discuss pay. We're going to give you enough time to answer, uh, ask as many questions as you would like to, and we're going to try and group these questions in themes, and we will try and answer all of them, but we won't get to some, we know that. So we will have to follow up um, with some of the questions or answers at a later time. I'm going to hand over to our speakers this evening, and the first speaker we're going to hear from is Dave Dawes. Thank you, Donna, and welcome everyone. Uh, I want to welcome you to this evening, and, and this is very much about you and your opportunity to uh, ask us questions and for us to answer them. And I wanted to take a few minutes just before we started to update you on what's happened in the last 24 hours. Uh, many of you will have seen the coverage on social media and we've been the lead story on the BBC, on The Guardian, on Sky News, on um, pretty much every news outlet. So this week on Wednesday, we found out from the government in their budget this year that not only are they reducing NHS funding, they are making no allocation for a pay increase for nurses. And we were angry about that. Then yesterday we found out that the government's evidence to the pay review body was that they felt that nurses only deserved a 1% pay award. And we were beyond angry. Our members were livid, your council was livid, our staff are livid, all your elected officials are absolutely disgusted by this. We cannot believe that after everything that we've been through, after this god awful pandemic, after hundreds of nurses have died caring for people, that the government's ignored all our evidence, all our campaigning and is recommending a pathetic 1% pay rise. So last night, Within a few hours of the government's announcement, we held an emergency council meeting. And last night, your elected council, uh, in conjunction with your elected trade union committee, uh, unanimously allocated £35 million to an industrial action fund. This industrial action fund is the largest strike fund of any UK union. And we believe it's the largest strike fund the UK has ever seen. And this is just the first step. Over the next few months, we will be announcing a series of steps to ensure that if we have to ballot for industrial action in the summer, that we will win. The government is sending us a very clear message about their intentions on pay. The RCN is sending a very clear message to the government that we feel that industrial action is becoming much more likely. The government has very clear choices. 12.5% pay for nurses is a political choice. All of this talk of there being no money is complete garbage. You will have seen the coverage of a health minister today saying that there is no money. That's simply not true. 12.5% pay increase would cost the government £4.25 billion. And we know that if that's paid out, Two billion goes straight back into the Treasury through national insurance. So the remaining 2.25 billion actually arrives in the pocket of nurses. And we know that when nurses get that pay, they will spend it on food, on petrol, on kids clothes, on basics for their family. And that will actually boost the economy. There's really clear evidence about this. There is money and this is about choices. The Chancellor chose to spend five billion pounds on his research in his restart grant programme for businesses instead of two billion on nurses pay. That was his choice. The Chancellor chose to spend 25 billion on his super deductions tax for company investment. That enables multinational companies to refurbish their warehouses. He chose to spend 25 billion pounds on that instead of two billion on nurses pay. The government clearly has the money, but they are choosing not to fund nurses pay. We aren't going to put up with this. 
and it's clear from social media that the members and the public are with us. Uh, I just wanted to close by saying that Prime Minister Boris Johnson uh, is quite an admirer of Winston Churchill. I very much suspect that is probably the only thing I have in common with Prime Minister Johnson. So I wanted to send a very clear message to him in the words of Winston Churchill. We shall not fail or falter. We shall not weaken or tire. Neither the sudden shock of battle nor the long drawn trials of vigilance and exertion will wear us down. We are fully prepared to fight for nurses' pay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dave. I'm going to hand over now to our leader at the Ch Trade Union Committee, Denise Kelly. Thank you, Donna. So my name is Denise Kelly. I'm the Deputy Chair of the Trade Union Committee. I'm also a frontline registered nurse. I'm a steward and I'm chair of a branch in Northern Ireland. I made a commitment and a promise when I was elected to this role that I would be the voice and I would be an advocate for my colleagues in the nursing profession. The decisions that the government have made both in the budget and yesterday with that dastardly 1% pay increase is wholly inadequate. It's completely insulting and it's unacceptable. I have stood on the front lines. I have watched my colleagues struggle. I have seen them exhausted. I have seen them burnt out and enough is enough. I give you this pledge that we will be sticking to the member pay policy and we will be delivering a substantial, fair, meaningful 12.5% consolidated, fully funded pay raise for our members. I'm very happy to take any questions from you. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Um, our first question is in now um, and it's from Matt. I'm so pleased the RCN is being reactive to the 1%. You have committed to 35 million to a strike fund, but can we actually see that develop into a real ballot? And if so, when? So I'm going to hand that over to um, Helen, really, just to, to, to give us the process. Of, of when we would ever think about getting to ballot. Thanks, Donna, and evening, everybody. Um, yeah, and it is quite a complicated process that we have to go through because members will remember in the last session that we did, we talked about the process of the pay review body. And the pay review body is the body that the government's right to, to ask to make a recommendation about NHS pay. So that's all of the staff on Agenda for Change contracts. What we saw yesterday was the Westminster government giving their evidence for NHS England. So that's gone into the pay review body. We have also given written evidence to the pay review body and it's published on our website for, for members and the public to see. What happens next is that the pay review body takes a number of uh, oral evidence from different stakeholders who have all given written evidence and that includes the Royal College of Nursing and of course includes our um, elected uh, trade union committee representatives. We think that will take a couple of months and then we anticipate that as the summer starts to unfold the pay review body will make a recommendation to the Westminster government and the Westminster government will then decide what it wants to do with that recommendation. It can choose to ignore it and do its own thing, although given that it's put in a remit letter, that's unlikely. It can choose to accept it and say that's the award for this year, or it could choose to add to it or do something slightly different. We won't know what the Westminster government will do until they've actually had that. But given the evidence that we saw yesterday, we know that they're minded around a 1% type of rise. And that's why Dave was saying we we're so cross about that. At that point, we will need to speak to the members and the Trade Union Committee and Council have been really clear that members will have a say in whatever is placed before us in terms of pay and we'll gauge from members what their views are and that will lead us into next steps. So if members views are very, very strong at, against a low pay rise, then of course there'll be an opportunity then to move further into 
formal dispute where we formally say to the Westminster government, we're not happy with this uh, pay settlement. Uh, and then we go through a process potentially of an indicative ballot and then a formal ballot process for industrial action. It sounds like it uh, takes a long time, but actually once we get that announcement, things will move really quickly. And the trade union committee um, and council have been very clear about requiring that preparation to be done in a timely manner. But that's the process that we will see now over the next couple of uh, weeks and months, Donna. Thank you, Helen. Um, have we got any more questions coming through? I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that, Dave. While we're waiting for the next question. Oh, but it's just arrived. Oh, right. Um, okay. Yeah, that's fine. This is from Kaz K from Hampshire. And um, she says, I'm sick and tired of the ministers continually saying to the public, we have received 12% pay rise and the average nurse's pay is 35,000. Where are they getting this information from? And can it please be vehemently and robustly refuted? So I don't know, Kaz, if you've seen my interviews today, but I have vehemently and robustly refuted all of this um, by saying that no, no nurse recognises what the government is um, claiming. So we have been doing that. We have every single time, I think Nicole's online, every single time that Boris has said some of this nonsense, we have absolutely gone back to him. Anybody else want to add anything to this? I, I don't mind adding something. Uh, and, and I think Don has given a really strong rebuttal every time it's said. And to be honest, it's an old tactic. You know, we've we, we've been at this game for quite a long time. We we know how this works. We know how governments work. And it's a really classic sign of, of misinformation. So you'll, you'll hear the same lies put out time and time again. Um, uh, it, you know, there is no money. There clearly is money that nurses are suddenly on this this uh, huge starting salary when we know they're not. That individual nurses are getting 13 percent when they know they're not. And we're pushing back and we're pushing back. And to be honest, and I think it's fairly clear, the, the government just don't believe them. Um, and we're absolutely clear and we can produce the evidence. And you're actually seeing a lot of nurses just putting their pay slips on social media and going, show me, show me newly qualified nurses on that money. Uh, it's an old tactic and it's not going to work. And Helen's just reminded us that we have submitted it as part of our evidence as well to the pay review body. How can we best take meaningful and effective industrial action while COVID continues to threaten? Um, I'm going to hand this one to you, Dave. Thanks, Donna. And I think we need to be clear about the time scale. We're saying that what we think is very likely to happen this year, and it's very much down to the government and the next steps. So the evidence has gone to the pay review body. We've put in all our evidence and it's costed around 12 and a half percent. The pay review body will make a determination over the next few months. They will then give that determination to the government and the government will then make a decision. We're expecting that that will be in the summer, probably June and July, and we've committed that we will ask our membership what they think about that offer. And if the offer is the way it's appearing and they're, they're just looking for one or two percent, um, then I think the members will be very clear. We get a very strong message from the members will then go to industrial action. So what we're looking for is I think the bulk of this activity will probably be in July and August. So this is very much a marathon rather than a sprint. The £35 million strike fund is just the first step. We're going to be announcing further actions and uh, further processes over the next month or two. We're basically going to spend the next five or six months getting the organisation, getting members, getting our staff, getting our elected officials absolutely ballot ready so that if where if this comes out the way we're fully expecting it to come out, that we will have a very, very high chance of getting a 50% ballot, of having legal industrial action, and if that's supported by the members, that, that we will force this issue through. So I don't want people thinking we're going to be balloting for strike action next week. You know, we need to be in dispute. 
that is likely to be happening in about uh, four or five months so that we're setting out a very clear direction of travel but we feel because of the government signals this week that they have no intention whatsoever of coming anywhere near 12.5 percent our members have been very clear that that's what we need and that's what we deserve and that's what the evidence supports so what we're looking at is to work over the next four to five months to get into a really strong position and we show from our experience in northern ireland we can do this we know how to do this we can protect patients we can do this safely we can do this professionally and we had such support from nurses and the members and that's what we're anticipating across the uk thank you dave um denise did you want to add something to that yes thank you donna i was just wanting to add to that that like the strategy we used here in northern ireland now is the time that we must educate we must engage and we must empower not only our colleagues but our family and our friends as well have that conversation every nurse in handover if you're down at the shop have a conversation with somebody with people in the shop get the message out there we need to get everybody energized we need to show that we mean business we are not accepting this from the government so you'll see a lot of comms coming out from RCN. Please follow our Fair Pay for Nursing campaign, the strategy and the plans. Get involved with your branches, have the conversations with your colleagues and let's send out a very strong message. Enough is enough and the nursing voice is going to be heard. As your leaders, we commit to delivering the member pay policy and making sure that we are not going to be treated with disdain anymore by this government. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Denise. Um, so there's a question come through that says, does it mean that all countries will get 1% now that England has recommended this? Um, I will give that one to, do you want to take that one, Denise? Yes, no problem. So we have the Barnet Consequentials, which applies to Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland at the minute. Normally, Westminster would make an announcement, say, for example, 1%. Then a percentage of that would go to Scotland, it would go to Wales, and it would go to Northern Ireland. But it very rarely deviates. Scotland is the exception to the rule and that they can income generate, they can raise taxes, and they can negotiate a different deal. And they have already made it clear that they are not going to be using the pay review body process to negotiate a pay deal for nursing staff in Scotland. But the 1%, looking back on our previous history with the pay review body, it's likely that if that's announced at Westminster that that's what we will receive in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. And unfortunately, as you've seen with our strike action in Northern Ireland, we had broken pay parity. But hopefully after our strike action last year, there's been a commitment that that will not be broken again. And I think we need to get a fair rise for the four countries of exactly the same 12.5%. It is a devolved decision for governments as it's political for them as it is for England. Thanks, Donna. Thank you, Denise. Um, have we got any more questions coming through? How do we keep the public on board? Dave, do you want to take that one? Yeah, no, I think um, uh, that's a really good question and I think at the moment we've got strong support and we, we know that we know that the public um, the, the public's always valued nursing I think we've always as a profession had very strong support from the public I think the reality of this really horrible last year is so many members of the public have have come very close to the brutal reality of the pandemic of how nurses are struggling of the reality of of a health service under huge pressure I think we have the public. I think it's been really clear from social media, um, particularly today, that is huge swathes of the public are with us. I think the challenge is that we need to keep the public with us by just being straight with them and showing them the reality of life for nurses and the reality of the pressure that the system's under and recognising that the, the government will just give out whatever misinformation they possibly can to try and turn the public against us. And I think we just need to we call out, call out the disinformation, call out the lies when it is. We stick to the evidence and we just show people the reality. 
because it's really clear from the reality that nurses need 12 and a half percent not because we, we suddenly want to have our uh, our flats completely refurbished but because people need it to live on and their families are struggling and they're struggling individually and that that pay cut in real terms has happened over the last few years and we need to turn that around thank you dave um a question's come through that says will there be transparency we were sold the three-year pay deal as a good thing please don't do that to us again so how are we going to ensure transparency do you want to take that one helen for us thanks donna yeah well the trade union committee and council have been absolutely clear from the from the beginning of this pay round that members will have an opportunity to have their say uh, and the transparency agenda has been fully embraced by the Trade Union Committee and Council in that they've had many briefings, there's taken um, decisions out and around to boards and committees, invited branches into those discussions, tested things, sometimes in a confidential session, sometimes in an open session, to really hear the voice and the views of members across the whole of the UK. Um, and my understanding and my direction that I'm getting from both TUC and Council is that that needs to continue. Um, we have a member engagement group that's chaired by a member of the Trade Union Committee. Uh, so we're actively looking all the time about how we engage members and doing things like this is, is one of those things. Alongside that, we'll be doing some work about how we support our current reps um, and how we can um, empower other members to get active in this space as the next few weeks and, and months unfold. So transparency is absolutely important and um, members will definitely have an opportunity to say what they think about this because in order for us to push this forward we need to hear their voices. We absolutely need to hear a, a turnout and actually getting the turnout is that important. You know, you cannot rely on thinking well my colleague will vote for me or my friend will put my view forward everybody's voice is in, is really important so as we move forward we just want members to engage with the work that's going on through the fair pay for nursing campaign and look out for their emails that come weekly from the rcn as well as or the other various ways that we communicate with members so that they can see what the latest information is and, and get involved in it thank you helen did anybody else want to add anything? Dave, I can see you've come off mute. Do you want to add something yeah. to that? And I just wanted to to, uh, to follow on Helen's comments, really, um, you know, which I completely support. You, we, we got a lot of things wrong three years ago. We were very open about it. We got uh, an independent investigation into what went wrong. We published it. Um, I think some people are very uncomfortable with just the level of disclosure, but we we absolutely guaranteed that we would not be making those same mistakes again. Um, and I think we've learned a huge amount as an organisation and we're very much bending over backwards to be open and transparent. You know, we've gone to the membership multiple times. We're briefing boards, we're briefing activists. Um, so I think a lot of lessons have been learned. Um, and I also think a lot of really positive lessons have been learned from the strike action and the industrial action that was taken in Northern Ireland. That was the first time we ever did it. And I think we did that really professionally. And I think that was an amazing piece of work. So we've learned both, both lessons from the negative stuff that happened over the three year pay rise. And we've learned a lot of positive lessons from the, the industrial action in Northern Ireland. And um, I would just like to add that as your general secretary, I've given my word that we will be transparent and I think we have continued to and endeavoured to be so. Um, next question is, I appreciate my NHS nurse colleagues and their hard work, but what about us nurses working in the social care private sector? Do we exist? Who is standing up for us? And I'm going to send that one to Helen. Thank you, Donna, and, and it's a really good question. So thank you to the questioner for putting that forward. Um, and those of you that have joined us for pay Q&As in the past will know that we often pick up the issue about members who work outside the NHS and, and the environment for them is a lot is a lot more complicated. So the collective bargaining structures that you see in the NHS, they're not there uh, in social care and in the independent sector. Um, Having said that, under the independent sector strategy um, that was being led 
uh, to the latter part of 2020, uh, the Trade Union Committee have done a lot of work on what independent sector pay strategy needs to look like. And they've looked at it through the lens of lots of different types of environments. So from school nursing to um, GP nursing, right through to care homes and um, private uh, providers as well uh, and they're in the latter stages now of finalising a position that we think will be helpful and useful it will give us a platform to really campaign for members in these areas and once we've got that finalised platform we need to then think about creatively about how we go about that so it could be about individual relationships with employers but it could also be about questioning the com the uh, commissioning arrangements that we currently see uh, and the flow of money from government into these various different sectors so it's not going to be an easy ask for sure but it is one that the trade union committee are embracing um, and they've also been working with the forum chairs to ensure that we hear the voice of members working in that sector and they're reporting into then the independent sector strategy group so trying to make sure we get that cross matrix working around different things that the RCN is doing that align up together and therefore give us a really powerful platform to move that forward and engage with members that work in that sector sector and help them to get organised and help them to have their voices heard too when it comes to pay. Thank you. Um, there's a lot of questions coming through at no. the moment. Oh sorry Donna, I just wanted to chip in on that one as well. Just, okay, go, go for it. Yeah, just, just very briefly, um, as I see, we've got a lot of good questions. But um, and, and I, when I've spoken about pay quite often, I'll talk specifically about uh, the independent sector. I've worked outside the NHS for 20 years, so um, that's the sector that, that I work in. And there's a number of council colleagues of the same. And there's a number of people who've, who've, who uh, are in the independent sector. And we've been doing a lot of work on the independent sector pay. I think the reality is we know that if you shift the NHS pay, that the independent sector will follow suit because they're often competing for the same people. So very much, you know, although the bulk of our members work in the NHS, 40% work outside of it. And we know that this, this pay campaign will affect pay across the board, not just for the NHS. But uh, council are very committed to making sure that we offer as good as services for members working in the independent sectors we do for the NHS and we campaign for pay there as well. Thank you, Jane. Um, there's a fair Denise few... want to chip in on that one or? Sorry, Denise, I didn't know if you put your hand up. Yeah, it's just to echo, Dave, what you had said there. You know, we made a commitment to all of our members. We represent everybody. Our campaign is fair pay for nursing, not fair pay for AFC nursing. So I want to reassure our members in the independent sector that are not NHS that we are their voice too and we will make sure that they get a significant meaningful pay rise too. Thank you. Okay, so there's been a huge amount of questions um, referring to us going on strike um, and they're asking about the code and whether it's possible to go on strike um, through the with the NMC code. Um, I'm going to give that one to you Dave do you want to start with that oh I thought you were going to go to Denise because actually Denise can probably do this a bit better so if I hand over to Denise but I'm happy to pick up afterwards does that mean you don't know the code Dave as the chair of council I, I, I do know the code oh, okay okay I'll okay. just check in just check yeah, in. That's, that's a good go point. for it Denise go for it <laughs> Denise <laughs> Just before Denise was, I was going to say that we actually did, we've done this successfully in Northern Ireland. So not only do we know how to do it, we've demonstrated we can do it. But sorry, Denise. That's exactly what I was about to say, Dave. The NMC has made it clear in the past that taking lawful industrial action does not breach the code. We will take legal, legal advice, obviously, about our members every step of the way. And we'll share the experience that we had here in Northern Ireland, where none of our nurses who took action were left professionally vulnerable. RCN has very robust policies and protocols in place for safely and professionally managing action. And we will ensure that that is replicated nationally. So don't be afraid if that's what's putting people off. You know, well, with this, we have already demonstrated this in Northern Ireland. And don't let the code frighten you. We will keep you right every step of the way. Thank you, Dave. Helen, do you want to just uh, just remind us all of how far we've got to go before we get to industrial action? 
Thanks, Donna. Yeah, obviously there are legal requirements that we have to follow, um, following the legislation that was brought in back in 2016-17. Uh, so in order to successfully go on to a form of industrial action, firstly we have to be in a formal dispute and then we have to put our employers on notice that we're in that dispute. Then we have to ballot the members who are affected by those different employers uh, and we require for England, and it is slightly different around different parts of the UK, we re require a 50% turnout of the members who are eligible to vote in that ballot. Um, and then potentially because of the um, healthcare environment, we could also be shackled into a requirement in the legislation that looks for a 40% um, uh, a 40% yes to industrial action of the 50% of the members who vote. But clearly as we move forward um, and if that becomes more of a reality, we will of course be taking further and fuller legal advice to understand exactly um, what the requirements are for us to make that ballot legal and successful. OK, thanks Helen. Helen, take a breath because I'm coming to you again. The, uh, the question is, many people are asking about collaboration with other unions. Have you been in talk with any of the other trade unions about their planned response to the proposed pay deal? And what is it? Thank you, Donna. Um, I think firstly, just to remind the questioner that what we don't have at the moment is a proposed pay deal. What we have is the government in Westminster saying for England, NHS England, they think 1% is all, all that can be afforded. So we just need to be quite cognizant of that. So that will be for the pay review body to take that into context. And clearly we've done a lot of work saying that context is wrong. We are not just upset about that, but we're angry about that, given the reality of the gap that nurses have had and the contribution that they have made to the health of the nation in the, in the past year. But coming back to the point about working with other trade unions, the RCN is a member of the NHS staff council so that's 14 uh, unions all recognized um, to represent their members in the NHS uh, and we currently also are part of the secretariat um, of the NHS staff side so we continue to work very closely with our fellow trade unions we did joint evidence together for the pay review body um, work we'll do some joint oral uh, sessions with other unions and in the past of course we've done lots of joint communication and um, around pay and also terms and conditions during the time of um, of COVID. So we stay in very close contact with our other unions. We look for collaboration where we can get it and we also respect um, our own individual positions where required as well. Clearly we are speaking for nursing and that's the important point. We want to do that in collaboration with other unions but we also are speaking for nursing and the trade union committee and council have been absolutely really clear about that. Uh, but I would say that we do enjoy a good working relationship uh, and over the next few days we'll also be talking with the other unions about what the um, government evidence means uh, and where we can jointly work together to continue to raise awareness to um, our members and also the public of the importance of a fair pay rise for nursing. Thank you, Helen. Um, Denise, did you want to come in on that? You're on mute. Sorry, I'm having screen issues tonight. Apologies about that. No, I was just going to say that obviously we work in partnership with and in collaboration, just as Helen has said, with our other trade union colleagues. And at the end of the day, we're all after a significant meaningful pay rise for all members of the NHS. So we'll continue that joint work, we'll continue joint press releases, but we will be staying resolute with our own position of 12.5%. Thank you. Um, another question, um, does the pay review body ever make a higher pay award higher than that of the evidence that they get in? Do you want to start with that one for us, Dave? Yeah, uh, I can't remember a case where the pay review body's ever given a higher pay award than both parties have submitted, but I can think of, of quite a few in the past 
where they've given a higher level than the government has put in the evidence. So, I mean, there, there are two ways we could get 12 and percent. One is the pay review body could simply look at our evidence, go that it is stronger, which, you know, it clearly is. Um, and the pay review body could recommend 12 and percent or the pay review body could make a recommendation. The government could say in light of pressure, we're going to 12 and a half percent. Um, but I can remember in the 90s where often what our fight was is the pay review body would make a recommendation and the government wouldn't fully fund it. So for those of you with long memories in the 90s, I can remember a number of campaigns where we were saying fully, fully fund what the independent pay review body is saying that we should get and governments were saying that they didn't feel it was affordable. I mean, it's fair to say every single pay rise we've ever had has been against governments who want to pay us less. And if you go back to the 1950s, staff nurses, newly qualified staff nurses were paid one pound for an eight hour shift. Every single pay rise we've had since then has been resisted by governments of, of every complexion. So if it wasn't for unions fighting for it, we would still be earning one pound for an eight hour shift. Thank you, Dave. Um, any other members of the panel want to comment on that? I think I think that was an absolutely valid question. It is one for us to watch. Um, so. Many of our students out there are asking, how can they get involved? Over to you, Denise. I'm happy to answer that one. Thanks, Donna. That's a great question. We have got a fantastic student committee in all of our countries. We also have student ambassadors, so I would encourage our student nurses to approach any of the RCN reps, get signed up as an ambassador, get involved, link in with your student committee members. You know, you are our future, so it's important that we have you organised, have you mobilised, have you trained up now because you're going to be delivering our healthcare in the future. So for students, read the comms, link in, find out who your student ambassadors are and link in with your RCN regional officers. Again, going back to what I said before, link in with your branches, link in with your boards and communicate with each other. Again, you're our future and we need you to lead this for us. You'll be looking after me in the future. I think I'm going to get there before you, Denise. I'll just put that on the table. Um, Dave, do you want to add to that? No, I can't really think of anything else to, to add. I mean, the, the students have always been a really vital part of, of RCN governance and we have students on uh, on council, on our pay, on our um, trade union committee, on the RPNC, uh, student committee is really important part. So I, I think when we come to do um, a campaign and I'm sure we will be doing more campaigns as we get closer to what I think will probably end up being inevitable industrial action. I think it's very much all hands on deck and I think students have a huge amount they can contribute. I think retired members have a huge amount they can contribute. Absolutely everyone can get involved in supporting this, making sure people get um, get their information correct, raising awareness with the public and just kind of winning the argument both with the members and with the general public. So we've all got a part to play in the in the upcoming fight. OK. Um, and there's lots and lots of information on our website. Um, I think there's I, I think the Trade Union Committee uh, has done a shed load of work. Um, so there are key messages. You can see Helen with her poster behind her. Um, so it's about spreading the word. Um, you know, we still say write to your MPs because that's how we vent our feeling through the political architecture. Um, and as Nicole has just added to remind me, rcn.org uh, forward slash fair pay. OK, anything anybody else wanted to add to that last statement? Donna, only just to say, you know, we've we've run a number of different things as part of the campaign. There's been a petition, there's been an email, your MPs and and students definitely their support for those actions as they yeah. unfold are important. And, and as Denise was saying earlier, you know, talking to your family about this, talk to us as well, talk about what it feels like and 
going into the profession, what you think the pay looks like. You know, we use members a lot in, in the media. There's some super member stories have been unfolding today. So if, if you if you feel that you'd like to speak up a bit more, then, you know, contact your local branch and, and talk to us and, and we can help and support you to to say what it's really like as a person about to enter into the nursing profession. OK, so easy Donna, question. I just, oh. I just oh, want to say a quick thing, just because I've got a message. Um, so firstly, just let people know, you know, your, your council, your trade union committee, met a lot of the elected members are here today uh, and they're, they're watching this and contributing. But we've apparently had a number of members asking why uh, Donna isn't asking, uh, answering any questions. And, oh. and if I can just put my two penny with in, it's a really hard job moderating something like this and trying to answer questions. So when we were divvying up roles, Donna very kindly volunteered to be the moderator. So um, uh, we'll, we'll bear that in mind, but, but Donna's more than happy and more than capable to answer any other questions. She's also doing a really hard job about filtering the questions and we know there are hundreds of questions out there. So. Hey folks, you hear from me all the time, all the time. Um, in fact, I thought I would shut up tonight and just let some of the other people that, that are around me do some of the work. And that's what you can do when you're the Gen Sec. Um, so big question now, how do we find out who our RCN reps are within our trust? OK, I'll come in on that one, Donna. Yeah, please do. So I know within my own trust and within my own branch, we produce regular newsletters. We have got closed Facebook pages. We have got WhatsApp. We will have information notice boards around in the trust. So I would say seek out and find where they are. Ask your colleagues. You know, most of us will wear RCN rep lanyards, so we'll be easily identifiable. But again, younger people than me are much more social media savvy. Um, you will be able to get the information. So seek out, look at your notice boards, link in with your branches, ask your colleagues. There's reps not only in the NHS, but out in the independent sector. And if you go on to the RCN website, you'll see a list of all your branches and who this, the branch yeah. chair is, who the secretary, who the treasurer, and how you can have a mode of contact with us. So I hope that helps. The other thing I'd just quite quickly like to add as well, and I totally endorse all of Denise's suggestions, but also you can ring RCN Direct. And I get asked sometimes by members, you know, why is it you constantly plug Ring RCN Direct as a first point of call? Firstly, it helps log a lot of information with us so we can get a sense of where the issues are and where they're coming. But secondly, as anyone who's rung RCN Direct will know, almost the first thing they will do is they will check your workplace, they'll check your email. This stuff is going to be absolutely critical if we're going to have successful ballots. It will be sickening if we don't get the percentages that we need simply because emails didn't get through. So anyone listening tonight, ring RCN Direct. They will check, they will check your details in your workplace and they will also tell you not only who your reps are in your local organisation, but where your local branch is and how you can get involved. So please do use them. Thank you, Dave. So we've got lots of questions um, asking why we can't go on strike now. And um, I'm going to just uh, advise as I advised council last night um, that actually at this moment in time, we aren't in dispute. And I would also remind you that actually you can't go out on strike if you're not in dispute and you haven't gone to a ballot. But I'm going to ask Helen yet again to walk us through the steps that will take us because it's really, really important that you as our members understand this. If we were to go out on strike now, we would be in breach of the law and we will be injuncted. We would not be able to do it. So I'm going to ask Helen again to walk us through the steps of why we can't go out on strike now. Thank you, Donna. Um, and it is, you know, it is quite a, a lengthy process um, and we're back into pay review body after a three year gap. So I can understand why members are, are feeling where, where are we on this particular space? So at the moment, we have the pay review body taking evidence from everybody. They've taken evidence from the RCN. We've done that in writing. 
yesterday the Westminster government put in their written evidence and in that evidence they were making reference to 1% as being affordable which is why we felt very upset with the positioning that the government has been taking but it's for the pay review body which is an independent body to now consider all of that evidence and then to make a recommendation now they make that recommendation back to the governments that put in remit letters so for this year that's the government in Westminster for the NHS in England, the government in Northern Ireland for NHS and social care in Northern Ireland, and the government in Wales for NHS uh, care in Wales. The Scottish government have chosen not to use the pay review body process and are entering into discussions um, in Scotland. So that's a slightly different perspective on um, the pay review body process. At the point that the pay review body makes a recommendation the Westminster government can choose to accept that recommendation and say that's the award and um, they can choose to not make that recommendation they could choose to add additionality onto it at that point we will be asking and seeking our members views on what that looks like and we don't know what that looks like until the pay review body um, do make those recommendations back to government but I think it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that they're going with a one percent in their evidence and we should be very very wary about what the pay review body might recommend and hence our statements the work that we've been doing in the media the work that council have been doing um, in terms of an industrial action uh, fund so once we have had an opportunity to discuss that with members and we'll need to do that quickly and we've been preparing for that for some time if our members are feeling that that is not something they wish to see then we will need to move into a more formal balloting type of arrangement so at that point we would need to be in a legal trade dispute with the employers um, in the various countries in the first instance it would be an England dispute and only then could the RCN move to balloting its members for industrial action uh, and there are strict legal thresholds for each of the different parts of the UK which we would have to meet in order to be able to actually support members to take that action but we will explain this to members as and we will make it easy for members to be engaged and to respond and be able to have their voice heard. Dave was saying about RCN Direct, you, you can email them, you can web chat them, you can go to my RCN, absolutely key that you get your information up to date because we want to know everybody's view when this happens. So we need the members to own this too, that we need the members to feel passionate about it, to feel firm about it and to want to get in touch with us as soon as we know what this is going to look like for the 20 2021 um, pay round and um, those the timeline we think will be in the early summer the Westminster government um, in their remit letter they asked for the pay review body to report back sometime in May but these things often get slippage um, and we don't know what the world will look like in terms of Covid so it is a marathon as Dave said earlier but we need to be preparing for that as we as we move along so absolutely want members to contact us make sure we've got all the right information for them check their emails that their RCN emails are not going in the junk piles read them regularly look at what we're doing um, on the uh, websites and in social media and get involved contact your branch find out who your local rep is become a local rep become active in your branch because we need to know everybody's views when we get to the point that we've actually got what is on the table for this pay round thank you Helen so we've got two minutes and I know Dave's got his hands up but just a quick um just a quick because the question yeah. says what happens if they recommend something like 1.5 or 2 percent we will take any recommendation to our members that's our promise um so i just want to just ask this question to you dave so you can bring in whatever else okay. you wanted to say so the next question is coming directly at you we've got a couple of minutes can the rcn its members because the rcn is its members take industrial action on their own or do they have to do it with all unions so uh that that's quite a straightforward one we could take industrial action on our own 
uh, if we needed to. It will probably be far more effective to work with other unions, but we are a trade union in our own right. There have been disputes in the past where um, one profession has, uh, one union has taken action and others haven't. So uh, we, we perfectly can do that. It's up to the RCN whether or not we want to go down this route. But I wanted to follow on what Donna and Helen said and entirely endorse everything they said, that getting a legal strike action is really, really important for two reasons. Firstly, if we tried to do an illegal strike action, we would just have straight injunctions against us. It would stop all of our activity. It would completely destroy our credibility um, with the public and, and we would be acting irresponsibly. But secondly, and probably most important, we want to make sure that you as members are protected if you take strike action. You are only protected by the NMC if you take lawful strike action. If members try to take illegal strike action, then they would be at the mercy of uh, potentially NMC repercussions as well. So it's critically important that we act legally and responsibly. We know what the legal thresholds are. We are working on a plan and we, we, we intend, if we get that far, and as Donna said, if it's supported by the members, and the members want it, then we will ensure that it is a legal strike action and we will give you all the support and all the resources that you need. Thank you, Dave. Um, Denise, do you want to add anything? Uh, yeah, sorry, I was just going to add in, Donna, you know that this is now, as Dave has said, this is a key time for us to campaign and press the government to fund a higher pay award. The government will decide on the pay award, but between now and until the summer, we have got time to try and convince our government to fund a fair pay rise for nursing staff. We want and we need members to get active, to get engaged and to get involved. I cannot emphasise that enough. Yes, we're elected to represent you, but that old cliche, you are the union as members. We can only go on whatever the members mandate is. So I am pleased with you all three key messages that you can take home from tonight. Engage, educate and empower each other and let's deliver this for our members. Thanks, Donna. Thank you, Denise. Uh, I'm not sure if I can squeeze this question in, but I think I ought to. What happens if members in all countries, all four countries of the UK, don't vote for action? Does that mean that no country can take action? Shall I go first with that one, Donna? Yeah, please, Helen. Sorry, I should have... Um, so in terms it. of the the legislation it is slightly different in the different countries of the UK and um, and as I was saying earlier about a formal trade dispute that has to be with where the employment is so actually we could see different things happening in different parts of the country and um, so it, England could end up in a dispute and Scotland might not and, and England uh, Wales and Northern Ireland similarly that would be for for members to to think about and to go through. Obviously, in Northern Ireland, we are currently in a dispute, um, which clearly uh, throws a slightly different perspective for members in Northern Ireland. So their dispute has been about pay parity, um, and they're still looking for a number of areas in terms of the safe staffing angle of the dispute last year to be fully uh, uh, reconciled and put into place. So the simple answer is yes, we could see different countries doing different things because the trade dispute is actually between our, us as our, our members and who they're employed with and that is different in the different parts of the UK. Thank you Helen, very clear. So we've come to the end now um, and I'm really sorry that I wasn't available to ask, answer all your questions. Um, what I'd like to end with, I think I'm going to ask Denise to end with a final comment and I, I I'd just like to say it's been a real pleasure taking your questions this evening. Denise? Okay, thank you, John, and thank you everybody for joining us. I just want to emphasise that not only is the government lying about the 12.5% pay rise, but just keep this in mind, the potential deregulation of nursing is also another government priority, so that Matt Hancock can say that we have recruited 50,000 nurses. This is an attack on our profession, so we must be united and focused in our messages and our actions. So I will leave you with that thought. And that was a comment from one of um, our members. So we didn't manage to put all the comments out there, but one of you have, uh, have quite rightly brought that to our attention. So it's absolutely imperative that we support, as RCM members, 
any kind of um, fair pay campaign going forward. Um, I'm now going to wrap up the discussion and thank everybody for being here. I know that every single day out there, particularly at this time in COVID-19, it is a challenge for each and every one of you. We are here to try and fight on behalf of our members. We are trying very hard as the council and the executive team to advocate on behalf of each and every one of you. You will have witnessed us agitating because we do not like what we are hearing. So uh, all we can say is look, pass those messages on, stay active, read the things that we put out to you, stay engaged, um, stay with us because we cannot do this without you. So please make sure that each and every one of you update your, your details, make sure you stay contacted to your branch, visit our, our fair pay page on the website and please make sure that we continue the fight together. So I really want everybody to that has given up the time this evening. I know it's a Friday night. See what it see whether you're here when it's not locked down. I'm just going to put that out there. So when they lift lockdown, I want to still see you a Friday night pay campaign. Um, but actually, just stay safe and have a good day. Um, I just want to thank everybody once again. It's not the the easiest thing to do on a Friday night, but be assured we are trying to fight your corner. Thank you very much.